The chorus effect used to be associated with cheesy guitar tones and outdated songs from the 80s, but in today's pop and worship music, chorus is back in in a big way. And in today's tutorial, I wanna teach you how to use Mainstage's built-in chorus audio effect to add interest and depth to your pianos, pads, or any other type of sound in Mainstage. Let's take a look. So you can use chorus on pretty much any type of sound in main stage. I'm gonna start off by applying it to a piano sound so you can hear the stark difference between without and with the chorus effect. So let's add a new patch to the concert. We're gonna add a software instrument channel strip. And then we'll load it in a piano sound here in EXS24. So I'll click on the green area to load the preset browser. Go down to factory, acoustic pianos, and we'll just load in this Steinway piano sound. So this is what it sounds like without any chorus. So now let's add the chorus effect. You're gonna hover over the audio effect area, go down to modulation and choose chorus. So the chorus plugin in main stage is pretty basic. You have a rate control, an intensity control, and a mix knob. And you can even start by browsing through this small selection of factory presets to hear some examples of what this plugin can do. Or you can just start playing and twisting the knobs as you go. So this is what it sounds like with the factory default preset. We'll bring up the mix. So this controls the dry signal, so the unaffected signal and it mixes in the chorus signal. So higher percentages will mean more of the chorus effect. You can bring that mix back down and increase the intensity. So this increases the actual strength of the chorus effect itself. So it gets a lot more prominent at higher percentages. So generally, if you're gonna have a higher intensity value, you're probably gonna want a little bit less for that mix percentage so that it's not an overwhelming amount. You can get away with a lot more with a synth sound, but for something like a piano, it can start to sound like a honky-tonk or detuned type of piano sound pretty quickly. So you just wanna use just a little bit of this effect to taste. And if you want something that's more intense, probably bring that mix down just a smidge. And then you have the rate control, which gives you like tons of different options for how this chorus effect stands out. So I'm gonna bring the mix percentage up a little bit. We'll dial the intensity down. And then let me manipulate the rate as I play so you can hear how this influences the sound. So slower rates will have more of this swirling sort of movement feel in the background. And then faster rates be a much more prominent effect and generally generally you'll want to bring the intensity down at a higher rate value for most applications otherwise it's just going to be too over the top a couple of sweet spots that i really like for this rate value are somewhere between 1 and 1.5 hertz to add a really nice thick modulation behind something so more of a subtle detuning effect and then I'll also do much slower rates, like 0.5 hertz or even below that, with a little bit more intensity and a low mix percentage. And this is to add some movement or some shifting underneath the sound. So I'll exaggerate it a little bit so you can hear. And then let me turn the plugin off really quickly so you can just compare. This is with it off. with it on. One thing to note about the chorus plugin in main stage is that you will probably experience a little bit of a volume dip when you have the plugin turned on, especially as that mix percentage rises. So you can make up for that within your instrument plugin by just bringing up the volume of the plugin itself. Or you could go to utility and add the gain plugin here to just get some of that signal back. You just wanna make sure that the instrument isn't too subtle because of that volume drop. 
So demonstrated it with a piano sound here, just so you could hear with really uh, stark contrast with a lot of clarity, how this chorus effect is impacting the sound. But oftentimes one of the most common places you'll use chorus is with a synth sound. So let me load in a pad instead of a piano. So we'll go to synthesizers, synth pads, and the trusty basic pad. So this is what it sounds like with chorus turned off. Now let's open up the chorus plugin and turn it on. We'll go with a faster rate here. synthesizer sound, especially a pad sound, you can get away with a lot more of aggressive settings inside the chorus plugin. So you can go with a higher intensity, maybe even a little bit faster of a rate. We'll bring that mix down. One more time, I'll just turn it off so you can hear how it sounds without. time with it on. So it sort of smooths everything out. It makes things a little bit wider, a little bit more smeared, which is a really nice effect oftentimes for pad sounds. So then if you really wanted to dial this sound in, you can maybe add a little bit of reverb, post-chorus, and then you'd have a really great sort of diffused pad sound. Once you get comfortable with the chorus plugin, you can get some more control over parameters and achieve some more diverse chorus sounds by swapping out the chorus effect for the ensemble effect. Now this is a chorus effect as well, but you have some more control, some additional parameters. I'm not gonna dive into them for this video, but you can check out a few of these factory presets and do a little bit of exploring yourself to find out the different sounds that you can achieve with Ensemble that you can't achieve with the Chorus plugin. Folks, at Sunday Sounds, we believe Mainstage should be fun and easy to use, which is why we produce video tutorials just like this one. If you're ready to discover the foundation of your Worship Keys rig and you're using Mainstage, click the link in the description of this video right now to check out our Sunday Keys template, which is our done-for-you resource designed specifically for Mainstage Worship Keys players. Thanks for watching the video. Have a great day. Thank you.